finally, finally Canon has come to the party and released a Super 35 4K DCI camera with raw internal, 10 bit internal and 120 frames per second. Thank you. You know, I'm always really wary about getting too, too caught up with camera and, and gear announcements. Cause at the end of the day, it just, you know, we, we've got wonderful tools at our disposal. We have done for a long time. Um, but you know, don't we, isn't it? It's still just so exciting when, when new tech comes out. I, I don't know why it's just so, you know, exciting. And I, I try to, I try to not get caught up, but, but if I'm honest with myself, I do still get pretty caught up. And I think for me, you know, seeing the announcement, particularly at the C300 Mark III and the EOS R5, I just feel like Canon has done a total 180. Like in my eyes, they've been, you know, they came out with the uh, with the the 5D Mark II, you know, in 2008. I think it was the end of 2008. They revolutionised everything, and in in uh, in kind of what can I say? In celebration of these Canon really coming back in uh, in a big way. Oh, that screen's turned off. Where's my mouse? In celebration of Canon coming back in um, in such a big way. I'm actually shooting this on a uh, on my old 5D Mark II. So if I'm really soft and I'm out of focus, I apologize. Uh, but I'm really excited. So, you know, what does this what does this mean? So we, we recently, you know, we recently switched from red to uh, black magic design cameras or our, as our main in-house cameras here. It doesn't mean we don't rent other cameras when we need them, but they're cameras that for a lot of our work, which is, you know, corporate, commercial, music videos, uh, and personal narrative work, um, that they're our, our main go-to cameras that, that are appropriate for 90 plus percent of, of what we do and perfectly adequate um, uh, and perfectly acceptable for our clients. And I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying those cameras. I'm enjoying Blackmagic RAW um, and, and I really like the color science out of those cameras. Um, Canon, you know, their story has been really interesting. So they, they changed the game in 2008. And then I think myself and a lot of other people feel that they, they really just took the foot off the gas. And for a long time there, although their color has always been very nice. And, and that's the thing for a long time, they've just been super, super conservative, but they've been able to get by because they have so many people have Canon lenses and it's such a strong brand name, incredibly reliable cameras, but just in the specs, the, the, the lack of slow motion probably being, I think the big one to me and probably really, um, although the colors have been beautiful in my opinion for a long time, um, certainly lacking in just general latitude or dynamic range compared to other, other options on offer from the likes of red, um, in, in terms of perhaps maybe say cinema cameras and um, lacking compared to Sony, you know, uh, in, the, in the DSLR or the, um, the mirrorless market in the stills market. But with these three recent announcements, I know, I know the C500 Mark II isn't super recent, but I just feel like, okay, now they have a, I mean, yes, there's the C, the 700, right? But they have far more affordable a full frame cinema camera, 60 FPS, but now a, a, a freaking, I mean, 120 frames per second. Finally, finally Canon has come to the party and released a Super 35 4K DCI camera with raw internal, 10 bit internal and 120 frames per second. Thank you. And let's talk about the price. This is around, so this is around the same as the, as the, the Sony FX9, which is a, a full frame camera. Um, but I have always been more partial to that, that Canon color science. That's purely subjective. I completely acknowledge that. 
I really like the look out of Canon cameras. Um, and this, so I'm just on, um, on the BH site um, at the moment. One of the things that I'm really excited about, and I was talking to Shane about um, today, um, he was talking to me about, is this, um, this dual gain output. Um, so, so I'm reading off the website, but uh, where are we? Maintains lo low noise levels by reading out each pixel with different gains. It combines images using pixels shot with a saturation prioritizing amplifier for bright areas and a lower noise noise prioritizing amplifier for darker areas. So what I'm in my kind of layman shooter director head saying, oh, it's sort of like dual ISO sensor, but instead of only doing those separately, it's kind of combining that data uh, in the recording to give us more dynamic range, which sounds awesome. Like, yeah, I've always, uh, I had thought that for a while know nothing about camera making and what's possible. But yeah, if, if someone can get dual, dual, dual native ISO, which yeah, is a different thing, but somehow combine that in the image to get the best of both, that would be amazing. And Red sort of had something, you know, their HDRX, but it was basically recording another shutter speed um, of the same image. So you got those dual exposures, which you could combine. And that was fine for landscapes and things, but as soon as you had kind of movement in the image, it was it was pretty much unusable. I don't think it really was for that. It's a nice option to have, but this, this sounds, this sounds awesome. This sounds really game changing. If I were to buy, if I were to buy a, a cinema camera today, it would be, I'm not in the hunt for one right now, but the C300 Mark III, like as much as, yeah, I kind of love a full frame camera, but I don't need one. You know, you can get really creamy, you know, beautiful shallow depth of field shots on a Super 35 sensor. Um, then this 120 FPS is just awesome. And for, for me, for some of the client work that I do and I, and I shoot, they respond really well to, um, handheld um, slow motion sort of sort of work and so much so that for me it's just become a feature that I, I just I need to have it and I don't want to have to crop to get it so for me as much as having full frame it's it's not a, a greatly desired thing it would be nice the C500 mark 2 is just a is just is just not a camera I would personally um, buy because of that lack of 120 FPS, but the C300 Mark III, this is this is incredible, um, and and to me, what would be the big value proposition? Because I, I'm I'm sure the image quality out of the C300 Mark III will be well above the EOS R5. Let's talk about that in a sec. But there is a look, there is a Canon, as much as the cameras are all different, there is a recognizable Canon look to what the images that you get from the different Canon cameras. Um, and I reckon that um, the C300 Mark III and the EOS R5, I, I, I'd expect that for a lot of people, um, that's gonna be a wonderful B cam um, to the C300 Mark III. Um, just quickly, as for the C300 Mark II, I'm really interested to see if we're gonna see prices drop on that, either either new and used sales, and that camera um, can now output a raw signal and record Blackmagic RAW on the Blackmagic Video Assist, which I'm going to get my hands on soon and test out. Because this, although I don't need this camera, um, but I'm sort of like, oh, uh, we'll see 300 Mark II um, prices drop because I'm I've, we've been contemplating. We don't need one, but picking one up because we're like, oh, that, that could be a really good one-man band, you know, interview camera because you don't want to be worrying about focus if, if you are, I mean, we're usually in a crew of two and up, but but occasionally you do shoot something by yourself or, or you're just with someone. 
So yeah, I'm shooting this on a 5D Mark II and it's like a 12 minute, 4, <laughs> 4 gigabyte record limit. So I'm having to set my timer when I go to 12 minutes. <sighs> I can rant. Um, yeah, interested to see if those uh, C300 um, Mark II uh, prices are going to plummet. I mean, that was a camera that I think really summed up uh, a massive miscalculation on on Canon's part. You know, Sony had the FS7 significantly cheaper, um, and you know, just a huge thing that people wanted and needed was 60 FPS, 4K, full sensor, and and Canon, you know, did not. They did not deliver that, and they needed to. And these, these announcements, like particularly the C300 Mark III, but also the EOS R5, just to me is Canon saying, we are listening, we have heard you, here you go. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, it remains to be seen, obviously, what the price of the EOS R5 is gonna be, which if you haven't, you know, I'll just put the links to the BH sites. So you can just look at the specs or the, amount, the, the details there. But, but just really quickly, the EOS R5 has a potential partner. So I could see it, it looks like it's definitely going to be less money to get a C300 Mark III uh, and an EOS R5 on the side than it would be to get a, uh, a C500 Mark II um, on its own. So just real quick, the EOS R5 will do um, full sensor 8K up to 30 FPS, but it will do full sensor 4K at, um, at 120 FPS as well. And look, the, the 4K, because uh, and it'll do 8K raw, I don't think the 4K is raw, that's 10 bit, it's 422 10 bit H.265 Canon log. So expect to transcode that in post unless you want your system to blow up. I was reading before and I thought I, I thought I saw I thought I saw long long gop on the C the C three hundred Mark III and it did it does and I was like <gasps> long gop <laughs> but it's ju it's just an option it's like a, not a proxy mode but a but a lower quality option so you've got a good um, a good ten bit I think intra frame codec or or Canon raw light options there. For um, for 120 FPS, which is which is fantastic. Now, um, as someone who at the moment our our ACAM in house is the Blackmagic um, Ursa Mini Pro G2, and we've installed the the Raw Light um, IR uh, optical low pass filter in there, which I think is awesome. Um, I still think that camera is the best bang for your buck in the broadcast slash uh, cinema camera um, sort of market. As, as excellent and totally welcomed, and in terms of the C300 Mark III, I think that price is totally justified. Um, I think that's a really, it's not like, it's still expensive, but it's not, it's not like, that's outrageous. It's like, yep, yeah, okay. You, you, you know, just on the specs and how reliable I find Canon is, I think this, this is going to be amazing, but that's $11,000 US, you know, the, um, the Ursa G2, a 4.6K camera with 120 FPS, um, full sensor, um, slow-mo. Um, you've got many flavors of ProRes in there if you're, if you're shooting free run, freelance direct for someone and you need to just hand the files straight over. Or you've got, you know, Blackmagic RAW, which is absolutely a freaking outstanding um, codec. Not quite as flexible as, as, um, as the R3D format, but still offers those ability to make all those, those key RAW changes in post your ISO, your white balance and your tint and it's blazingly fast on the system. Um, so yeah, we're, we're certainly not looking to, to uh, at, oh, we have to jump ship or anything like that. We're, we're very aware that at the moment, um, you know, kind of kind of saving money going with Blackmagic, which enables us to invest um, 
money either in ourselves or in other gear, whether that's whether that's sound or lights or support equipment or whatever. Because I, I just think, you know, the camera is just one part it's just, yes, it is maybe the central part, but it's just one part of, of or one tool out of all the tools that we use. And, and at the end of the day, I think we've had like, we've had really great, like really capable cameras for a long, long time now. Like, you know, when I was in, when I was in high school, I was shooting on these tiny little, I started off shooting VHS and then these on, on little mini DV tapes. And then, and then when we started Elucinor, we had these two JVC cameras with, with a one third inch sensor on it. Then the, you know, the 5D Mark II came along and you know, this is just incredible where we're at at the moment. Um, hey, I've got a few notes. Hey, hey, check this out. I know, you know, I hope you're all doing well out there at the moment. I know it's really challenging times. I just want to show you. This is what the front of my diary normally looks like. And now, after having the kids at home all the time, very quickly, I think within their first day, like not at school, this <laughs> they got hold of my diary, and this is how it looks. But I reckon, I reckon clients will understand. I think they'll get it because so many people have had kids home. So I just wanted to check just if there's any notes that, like that I haven't covered because I, I just sat down, I was eating my muesli this morning, and just going, um, I, w I wanted to have a look. Oh yeah, so. Now that Canon has finally jumped on the 120 FPS bandwagon, and I think there is something magic about that 100 to 120 range, that where, where 50 or 60 just does not quite cut it to me. And that is that I love shooting handheld. I love shooting handheld, personal stories, like mini doc work, and I, I, and I love going handheld. But at, at 50 FPS, at 60 FPS, you don't get this, this floaty dreamlike movement that you get at 120 that makes handheld movement that much smoother and really beautiful. And the, the, the manual focus pulls and everything becomes kind of dreamlike and, and, and wonderful if, uh, if you're shooting it right in a way that it just doesn't have that smoothness at, at, at 50 or, or 60 FPS. And that's, that's why I, I, I adore it. And, but now that Canon is, is finally here, um, it does make me wonder for manufacturers like um, Blackmagic Design and Red, who, are, who I think are two of the two, two great companies, that um, uh, that's been something that they've been very, well, may, maybe Blackmagic not for so long, only since the G2, but um, they've been very good in the frame rate department. And what, what I, like for a long time, and now we've got Canon and, and you know Sony as well. Um, I think I think the FX9's got 120 FPS coming in future firmware. Um, not at the 6K full frame, but at S35 4K, which is still still very good and essentially what this is doing, the C300 Mark uh, Mark III. Um, but yeah, what I hope is that. You know, Canon, Canon's real innovations have been in, you know, dual pixel autofocus and main, maintaining, you know, really um, excellent, consistent colors across the ISO range. You know, Blackmagic, to me at this stage, not so good there, but if you're getting your exposure enough within the ballpark, the image quality is outstanding. Um, but what I'm hoping this does is make um, companies like Red, Black Magic, um, Panasonic, although Panasonic has some already, maybe start to uh, look at technologies more really pushing the autofocus side. And look, it's not a feature that I've known that like I've missed. We haven't had, oh, we, we have the, the, the Fuji X-T3, which we'll use the face tracking autofocus for like on a gimbal. And I'll use it shooting videos like this. So Shane's got it. He's he's prepping a video that'll be out in a few weeks, um, and um, so yeah, that's why I'm shooting on C500 Mark II. But it's a Canon video. I didn't I didn't want to shoot it on the Blackmagic. Um, so, um, but yeah, I, I can see a heap of value. You know, I've been watching a lot of other um, creators' content on YouTube, and I can see how whether it's probably mostly for interviews because I love I love doing manual focus when I'm shooting handheld, but. And, and there's there's a there's a poetry or I sound like a wanker, but there's a there's a um, 
you know, just being able to respond to what you're doing and, and, and pull focus, not necessarily in a, in a mathematically, it should be their way, but to try to, you know, I just sound like a wanker. You know what I'm talking about. I hope, I really hope that in response to this, um, black magic, uh, and, and red, um, or not in response to this, I hope they're already doing it. I hope that they are looking at autofocus for their systems. I don't need it to be amazing, but it would be wonderful to be able to shoot um, on the Blackmagic cameras and have autofocus like face tracking just for interviews or something. I think, I think Red is doing autofocus with their Komodo. So I'm really super excited and looking forward to that. With, with, the, um, with the R5, I guess my only questions with that, because I'm, again, the, 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 the autofocus, like, chat and Shane today, there's a real good chance it will buy that camera, irrespective of if we ever picked up a C300 Mark III or a used or a, or a new but cheap C300 Mark II. Because um, it just looks like a great, be great to have a new full frame Canon, like, stills camera for our own work and, and just for personal stuff. Um, I think with that, I'm, I'm just wary of, how are they going to get to that on <laughs> four gigabytes? Um, yeah, I'm just wary of how are they going to get to that 120 um, frames per second? Um, I, I would assume, I would hope that Canon think line skipping, pixel binning is no good. So I just hope they have a good technique for um, at, like, it's wonderful that that's without a crop. I applaud them for that. Um, yeah, I just, I hope that that 4K 120 isn't too mushy. Um, and I hope there's a way to maybe get that out of the camera somehow to an external, you know, recorder. Um, I have to say, if, if Canon made it possible to record Blackmagic RAW um, out of these cameras because Canon raw light, it ain't light. It's not light. And look, for certain purposes, that's exactly what you want. Um, but Q5 on, on, uh, on Canon is, is a great, uh, general purpose place to be. It would be amazing if Canon, um, open these up the way they have, or I don't know what relationship Canon and Blackmagic have, but the way they've made that, that it's been made possible for the, uh, for the Blackmagic video assist monitors to record um, Blackmagic RAW out of the uh, out of the C300 Mark II, which we are going to be testing probably next week and putting a, a video up. I think the only other thing I really want to say is I can feel myself. I get excited. I see these. I see these announcements, and I am I'm on I'm on Cinema 5D. Um, I love that. I love that website. I'm, I'm on, I'm on, I'm reading through all the specs. I'm looking at everything and I'm getting so, oh, what well, we could do with this, we could do with that. But you know, in another year, another two years, another three years, we're going to go through all this cycle again. And it doesn't make the cameras that we already have, it doesn't make them any less able to do what they are currently doing. Um, I think it's really important not to get too caught up and uh and 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 certainly not not spend money uh that that you don't have i just think there is no point ever getting a loan to get a camera different if you're a rental business or that's part of your business model and you rent your gear out i'm sure that or and in, and in certain markets perhaps that totally makes sense but generally you know buy what you can afford and if you can't afford it it's probably not the right camera for you yet um but yeah i think it's just I think we also have to get excited, yeah, for sure. This is awesome, but let's all calm the schnitzel down, and um, and like, <laughs> yeah, because there's other places to to in, to invest our money, uh, in in into our into our video production and our filmmaking, if if that's what we're going to do with our money or our business's money. So, um, yeah, like like I I really. I, I'm currently, I'm still blown away by what um, Blackmagic is um, delivering for the price. I think we've had wonderful cameras um, for a long time, um, but I would, hunt, I would would not rule out um, picking up 
a C300 Mark III at some point in the future because this looks like it delivers so much and it looks like I'm kind of like is this the perfect all-rounder super 35 120 FPS onboard audio dual pixel autofocus a claim 16 plus stops of dynamic range inbuilt NDs um, what is it? Uh, In-body image stabilization. No, sorry, that's the LSR5. What's their image stabilization? The digital stabilization, whatever it is. Four channel audio recording, okay. Electronic image stabilization, yeah. Um, this might be the best all-rounder just on the specs that we've ever seen. Not just at this price point, that we've ever seen. I'm really excited um, about seeing what much better shooters than myself are gonna do with this outstanding camera, not to mention the R5 and uh, the C500 Mark II. So Canon, welcome back. Good to see you delivering on this level. It's freaking awesome. I cannot wait to see how this pushes the competition to respond and deliver even hopefully better cameras to us in the years ahead. Talk to you soon.